Hi readers and welcome back to the book The Old Story Time by Trevor Roan. The CSEC Student Edition. Now we have already completed Act 1, Scene 1 in previous videos. So if you haven't checked those out already, please go ahead and check them out before listening to Act 2, Scene 1. Let's begin! In the darkness, we hear the voices of the actors questioning who has brought peanuts teasing each other. A general hubbub, noisy and carefree. A match explodes in the dark as Pa Ben lights his pipe. Pa Ben. All right, all right. Checking and showing his bottle of rum. I'm ready for you again. Set off, set off. While I get my head together. Where did I reach? Actress who plays Mama, where Miss Allen was laughing. Pa Ben, ah, yes. What a way it did sweet him. Him laugh till him almost wet him pants. But to hear what they say, was sweet nanny goat, all the actors joining. I go run him belly. Miss Lois anxious to know what sweet him and what happened between him and the one McFarlane. Actor who plays George. What secret mangoes carrying for Miss Lois? Pa Ben. Miss Self want to know. All the actors. You know, man, you know. Actor who plays Len. Yes, him know. Pa Ben. I don't know. Honest. Would I tell a lie? All the actors. Yes. Pa Ben. What I do know is that if Mr. Lenny didn't know, maybe him wouldn't laugh so. Anyway, that same night, Miss Eleni tell Miss Lois everything about the one Mangoose, actress who plays Pearl. Everything? Pardon. Well, not quite everything. Him leave out a very important piece of the story. Actor who plays Len. What him leave out? Pardon. Not just what, but why? All the actors. So tell us, tell us, tell us. Pardon. Patience. Everything in its time. Him tell her some of what happened in school days. How the boys, how the boy McFarlane did dance. Miss Eleni remember it as if it was yesterday. No, Miss Eleni never forget Mangoose and all the other big shot boys them. On one or two occasions that I had occasion to accompany Miss Aggie up to the school, me myself remember seeing the high posh riding into the schoolyard in them shiny new buggies with the big black stallions in harness. Kippity cop, kippity cop. Pa Ben, you should see them just sneering down on the world, them head way up in the sky. Drunk with power and authority. George, whoa. Pardon, but it's when they start to strut like peacock. The fat slobs them dress up in their Sunday go to meeting. Biggity, oh so arrogant. George, here boy, Len hesitates. On the double boy, move. Len hurries, clean my shoes. Burnish it till you see your big black ugly face in it, boy. Len goes on all fours and starts to polish George's shoes. George is enjoying himself immensely. He uses Len's back as a footrest for his free foot. His riding crop poised over Len's backside. Ah, boy, don't forget we need you for the Easter play. We have you down for three parts, Judas Iscariot, one of the thieves, and both ends of the donkey. Ha ha ha! He straddles Len, riding and whipping him. Sport! What sport? The action freezes after a while. Pardon. Yeah. You hear what they used him for? They beat him black behind till it turned blue. All of them playing Jesus. And they ride him into Jerusalem. I don't forget them. And Miss Eleni don't forget them either. It living in memory. Parben calls the actress who plays Pearl. He whispers to her and she goes off excitedly.
There it was. Miss Aggie spent her good money to educate the boy, and he passed good, good, but him couldn't get no job in the bank, only mutual labor. But don't see mangoes who never pass one subject, never had to ask for no job. No, they ask him if he want the job. Him who didn't even know enough to work in Mr. Elias' clothes shop. And they give him the keys to the vault. In no time at all, he moved from teller to bank manager. In a few years, in him end up rich, rich. I couldn't figure it out. So I had to ask Mr. Lenny to explain it to me. And the way I understand it. Suppose you want to start a housing scheme. You're going to need money to borrow. So you go to George's bank. George dials a number and is talking quietly on the telephone. George, yes, Bertie, up to now the wife is none the wiser. He laughs as the actress who plays Pearl enters George's office as the real estate developer. Hang on, Bertie, to the developer. Are you the lady from the real estate development company? Developer, I am, George. Let's see the plans. She displays them on the coffee table inadvertently, laying the plans upside down. George looks them over. Ah, ha, ah. hmm, yes, pardon. Him only looking, him don't understand nothing. George, oh, laughs foolishly. Hmm, hmm, I see. Not bad. Not bad. I'll have to put this up to, he to head office. See what they think. Leave everything and check back with me next week. Bertie boy, I am on to something hot. A housing scheme development. It's brilliant. Contact the other boys. We have to meet later. Financing will be no problem. Contact our lawyer friend. CM contractors last time. Pardon. Sly. No wonder they call him George. Man, we can make a million off this one. I don't know how I don't think of it before. I was sitting here and the thing just flashed in front of my eyes. Pardon. Liar. George. No. About a name for this new company. Bertie. We're going to need something really profound. Like, ah, let me see. How about ABC Homes? Pardon. Damn, I could call it that. A, B, C. George Holmes. That's it, man. You like it? Good, good. You see the symbolism? Pardon. So when the next week come and the woman got back to see what's happening with her plan. George on the phone. Tell her I am out. Pardon. Damn lie. George. And head office turned down her proposal. Pardon, wicked brute. George, but if she come up with anything else, she must check with me. Actress who plays Lois. Him want to tea for her again. Pardon. No, him have the plan. Him need to get the money to develop it. Him can't borrow it in him own name for him is the bank manager. So him go round the corner and set up him friend to borrow it in their name, one of the friend named Bertie. At the same time, George draw up papers with them giving himself 70% of the profit and the profits keep rolling in. George on the phone sits on the sofa, one foot up on the coffee table, a huge cigar in his hand. Bertie, contact the lawyers. We need to set up two more companies. Same plans as before. He hangs up, then pulls on his cigar. Pardon. Greed married to ignorance. Him try it once too often, the bank find him out. The newspapers hear about it, and before you know it, Mangoose name gone abroad. Sly Mangoose, your name gone abroad. And is panic in him pants. George is up and about like a scared mongoose in a cage. George, Jesus Christ, Bertie man. All right, all right, don't panic. Advertise them again. We have to sell 12 houses this week or we are in plenty of trouble. Yes, I read the article. Somebody should burn down that newspaper. 
who the hell could have fed them that information? No matter if we organize, we can come out. Leave it to me. I have an idea. Pardon. And that is when George starts to forge into people's bank account. Actress who plays mama. Forge? You mean thief. Pardon. Me mean thief. Poor Miss Aggie was only one of the people that him trick. Actor who plays Len. All three card man. Pardon. Before you know it, the bank kick him out. Of course, they wasn't going to shame one of them own in public, but them demand back the money him did borrow. And in two twos, him start to lose him shirt. Pardon. Mas Lenny investigate mangoes down to the last. Him is a smart boy now, that Mr. Lenny. Him got the mangoes in a cage, but I don't like it. When you got a mangoes lock up, is then him dangerous? And that thing with Miss Lois, I don't like it at all. George, yes, Bertie, man, the man tumbling so is a definite possibility. Is a black man. I can handle him. Plus, and this is a real plus. I know his wife. <laughs> we will talk. Lock up the files on ABC. And Mrs. Tomlinson, tell me where she lives. Len, I've been chasing the bugger for months. Ignores my calls. Stroke of genius how I got him to come here tonight. Lois, how did you? Len, I put the word out that the new man, Tomlinson at the bank, was a soft touch for a loan. That I wasn't unapproachable about making a deal. Under the table, of course. He arrives here tonight with one set of hocus-pocus information. Where is that list of people who he says would be willing to purchase at an escalated price? He goes off to get it. George on the phone. Say what? No, Mrs. Tomlinson on the file. There must be. Unless. All right. I know how I can get the information. Any luck with tomorrow's pay bill? Oh, no. You can try your uncle. Anybody we can borrow it from. If it's even else, if everything else fail, there is a lawyer who can give me a second mortgage on my mother's house. Get a message to the office. Tell the workmen the pay bill will be in a few hours, will be a few hours late. And tell the office staff half pay till Wednesday. I know we won't have it on Wednesday, but then we can think of something else. You have Tomlinson's phone number on you? Let me have it. Len, coming on with the papers. Here we are. Peter Malcolm. This man died five years ago. I'd say Mr. Malcolm got all the real estate he's likely to need. All fictitious characters. Lois. If he's, if he's down and out, as you say he is, aren't you wasting your time trying to get your mother's money back? Len, maybe. But MacFarlane is vermin. I have an I have a moral right to bid society of that sort of scum. Come to think of it, you should know MacFarlane, Lois. Should I? George on the phone. Six, eight, Len. You didn't run into him when you worked at Barclays, Lois. What branch was he at? Len, uptown, Lois. I was downtown, George, on the phone. Tomorrow, Len, were you? Lois, does it matter? Len, not really. Thought you may have known the bum. The phone rings in Len's house. Lois answers. Lois, hello? George, Lois? Lois, yes? George, Len's mother. Is she at Tomlinson as well? Tell me. Where she live? Lois. Wrong number. She hangs up. The lights goes down very slowly on all the areas in the darkness. Lois and Len leaves the stage. George removes his jacket as the light comes up again. He is walking towards Pa Ben's house. George calling out. Hello, hello. Anybody at home? Pa Ben from inside his house. He's who that now? George. Come here, man. Pabin, come out to see George. All well, all well. He has his he has on his spectacles 
and there is an open Bible in his hand. George, Miss Agatha Simmons, where can I find her? Pavin, Simmons, Simmons. George, yes, Simmons. Pavin, oh, Miss Aggie, you're in the right place, but she's not here right now. She's just gone down by the Baptist church. If you walk fast, you will catch her. Straight ahead. George goes. Hey, man, you forget something, George. What? Pabin, to tell me thanks? George, oh, sorry, man, thanks. Pabin, rude, no manners, and manners make it a man to the audience. No, Miss Spirit never take him. Never like the looks of the fellow. I wonder what him want with Miss Aggie. She's so caged nowadays. Now tell me our business like first time. It's strange all the same to see a big white man in these parts. And it's not election time. I just hope it's not something bad. He looks in the direction George left in, then goes into his house. End of Act 2, Scene 1.